Thanks a lot, Kevin. It's really my uh, great pleasure to be Thank here. You. So happy that so many people came out today. It, we're really honored that you came to join us on uh, a Saturday morning. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Schnell for that wonderful talk. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure having him. He's a world expert in really running some of the most exciting trials. He also grew up here in Houston. He went to Bel Air High School, and I've been trying to convince him to come back to Texas, so maybe you can help me out with that. Uh, so um, Kevin, Kim, and Sapna Patel uh, have put a lot of work into this conference, so I want to thank them. And uh, the AIM organization, I just want to tell you, uh, and Gene Schlipman and, and the AIM organization is a, a fantastic group. They really put their heart and souls into this, these educational seminars. They're helping us, along with Judy Segar, uh, helping us with our walk next month. I hope you guys all come to that. So well, I really appreciate them. What I'm going to do is uh, follow up what Dr. Schnell started talking about T-cell therapy. We're really excited about our immune therapies because the immune system lasts a long time. And that, that's why uh, what we hope for every patient is that your response, that your tumors shrink, and that they stay small for a, or, or gone for a long time. That's our goal with every single patient. So you get vaccines when you're little, uh, polio vaccines, for example, and you never get them again, but yet you don't get polio. It, it's because your immune system has memory, and that's what we're trying to take advantage here with our immune therapies. Now, uh, the, the advantage of the immune therapies is that, that uh, immune cells can travel throughout the body, and that's the problem with melanoma. Melanoma goes throughout the body, so our immune cells go through the bloodstream and they can travel throughout the body, and that's what, what our goal is. Now, I know it's very complicated. Uh, the immune system is actually not that complicated. Well, we, we're trying all of these, the cytokines, the vaccines, the, the checkpoint blockade, the Yervoy, the NIPD one. The only goal is to take our killer cell, have it touch our tumor cell, then it secretes things that pokes holes in the tumor cell and the tumor cell blows up. And so all of the, the goal of all these treatments is to get our T cell, which is like the army, the soldier. So here we have uh, like a batter, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, I, I wish uh, the batters were doing a little better. But, uh, <laughs> but, but it, it's like trying to kill that, that tumor cell. And so this is, um, uh, a video of an immune cell, it's this small cell here, uh, attacking the tumor cell. It kisses the tumor cell, uh, recognizes some receptors, secretes enzymes, it pokes holes in the tumor, and then the tumor blows up, and then the immune cell just trucks on over to another uh, uh, tumor cell, and, and it continues to do that. And so our whole goal with T-cell therapy vaccines and all is just to help uh, increase the activity of this soldier and to have more soldiers in the body. So with um, uh, our T-cell therapy, the goal is to take the tumors and grow those immune cells out to very large numbers and then give them back. So it's a, a, a big team effort. We have our wonderful surgeons like Dr. Ross uh, that, that work with us to take the tumors out. And every tumor that we take out, there are cells in there trying to do the job. They're trying to kill the tumor, obviously not doing a good enough job because the tumor is growing. So we put, take them in the lab, nurture them, encourage them talk to them and get them to grow uh, to very large numbers. Um, and uh, then we give those back to the patients. And we can get some good responses in patients that are long lasting. And that's why it's so exciting. This is one of our patients who now is, um, uh, has had tumor regress for several years. It's hard to even get her back. It was after college, and then now she's off somewhere in the country uh, living her life uh, because the immune cells last in the body. Here, here's another patient who failed chemotherapies and multiple surgeries. Has, uh, this is a CAT scan, so it's a cut through the body. This is the pelvis. And you can see that uh, a bunch of lymph nodes are positive, and now after 18 months, and now it's been about three years, he's doing extremely well with all of the tumor regressed after having that therapy. So the response has been between 40 and 50% in all of our patients. That's how many patients have tumor that has decreased in size. And many of these responses are durable. It's because these immune cells can last a long time. So these are greater than 37 uh, months. We now have people over four years uh, here, but at the NCI where I trained before, we now have patients um, practically, I think, over 10 years that have done well with this T cell therapy. And that's the goal. Um, now, uh, working with people in the lab, such as Laszlo Rudvani, we're looking at uh, 
what it is about patients that do really well compared to patients uh, that don't have such a nice response. And one of the things is the more cells we give, the better. It just makes sense. The more soldiers we put into the bloodstream, the better. So when we found that out, we were giving a maximum of 100 billion cells. When we amended our trial, now we can give up to 150 billion cells because what we think the more we give, uh, the better. Uh, so um, also, uh, Dr. Rudvanya is looking at the kind of cell in, in uh, the that we give, and the CD8 cell is that killer cell that can cause the tumor to explode. So he's found that the more CD8 cells we give, the better. So he's now working very hard in the lab with his uh, large team to try to grow more of these killer cells so he can give the even not just more cells, but uh, uh, highly trained green beret cells that, that can go in there and really kill. Uh, so uh, now this is... Um, there are now several centers, as Dr. Schnell mentioned, that can give this. This is where uh, um, I trained. I worked for many years with Steven Rosenberg. Um, and, and you can see they have had a, a large experience with some very large tumors going away with this uh, T cell therapy. Um, uh, and here's some other examples of large tumors. So it's not just here, it's also at the NCI. They've also looked at patients who have um, failed other treatments, including Yervoy, and they found, if anything, the patients do better after having had Yervoy. And that makes sense because Yervoy stimulates the immune system, and so then um, when we give other immune therapies, uh, we actually could build upon those therapies. So if you give multiple immune therapies, uh, that could actually be a good thing uh, because the immune cells can live in the body. But we uh, um, uh, have to do more patients to see if this holds up. Plus, um, we're, now the question is, with anti-PD-1 being such a hot drug, do patients have, uh, if they respond, great, but if they don't, can they then respond to T-cell therapy? And we, we're now doing studies to try to figure that out. It's a major question. Uh, you can look at response rates of different treatments and the response rates of the T cell therapy at the National Cancer Institute, MD Anderson. Uh, Moffitt now uh, in Florida, Jeff Weber has a program, and even a program in Israel uh, now, all with response rates between 40 and 50 percent, and many of those responses are durable. So that's uh, why we're so excited about it. This is just evidence of the work that's being done at the NCI. Uh, our work here at MD Anderson, the work um, uh, that's been published uh, from Israel, and the work from uh, Florida. So I think that uh, our goal is to try to really um, uh, have many more centers be able to provide this therapy because uh, we can't treat all the patients here. It just takes a lot of work in the lab, and so we're, we're really working hard to get more centers up and running. We're trying to get Seattle open, for example, for, for T-cell therapy. Um, so this is a growing network of, of um, centers where one can get T-cell therapy. We're trying to get Seattle up and running. Copen Copenhagen uh, has a program um, as well as uh, the program in, uh, there's a program in England as well. Uh, so hopefully we, um, there are some programs that are established, some being set up. Uh, we hope to have a nice uh, uh, global uh, network soon. So uh, as uh, Dr. Schnell mentioned, we're trying to see now if we combine therapies together, uh, um, will this even work better? And there are two ways to do it. One is with other immune therapies, and the other is with targeted therapies, such as what Kevin Kim talked about. So one is, does anti-PD-1 therapy enhance T-cell therapy? So we, we asked that question in the lab, and we did that with our mouse models. Now, some people say, oh, that works in the mice, but it's never going to work in people. It turns out that if you do the mouse studies right, that, that um, most things that are worked out in the mouse can work in, in people. The IL-2 was worked out in a mouse. Uh, T-cell therapy in the first place was worked out in the mouse. Your voy was worked out in the mouse. Turns out we're not that much different from mice, you know? Uh, <laughs> How many people think we're 50% like a mouse? <laughs> what, about, what about 60? What about 70? What about 80? What about 90? Well, we're actually, if you look at just the DNA and you line it up, we're 90% like a mouse. Uh, so that's kind of humbling. And I, when I uh, read the newspaper in the morning, I think, you know, I'm not sure which is the superior species sometimes. <laughs> so, um, so, so this is um, a study of anti-PD-1 therapy uh, plus 
uh, T cell therapy in mice, and we label the T cells with the uh, gene from firefly luciferase, the gene that makes the light from fireflies. And so you can see the T cells accumulated. Here's where the tumor was much better at the tumor site um, if we gave the anti-PD-1 therapy. And so this is the tumor regression. Also, when we gave the combination of anti-PD-1 plus T cells, much better. So we're really excited to try to translate this to, to patients. Uh, Rhoda Amaria, one of our new uh, attendings, is now uh, working with many of the drug companies trying to get anti-PD-1 therapy so we can combine it with our uh, T cell therapy. We hope to get that up and running soon. Uh, then the targeted therapy that Dr. Kim talked about, we're trying to see if the targeted therapy uh, enhances uh, T cell therapy. So again, we uh, did some studies in the mouse and we showed that that combination did uh, induce a better tumor regression and also caused the T cells to come uh, uh, or to travel to the tumor better in, in the mouse model. So we're excited about doing that combination and we now have FDA approval. If someone fails a BRAF inhibitor and the tumor grows, we can continue that BRAF inhibitor and add the T cells on top of that. So uh, that is now um, one of our cohorts in our current T cell trial. So we're hoping to put things together that um, we think that the BRAF gene causes a lot of problems for T cells. And if we inhibit the BRAF gene with um, uh, either uh, vemurafenib or uh, the GSK BRAF inhibitor, uh, either one of those, um, we have, um, we hope that we can relieve that immunosuppression so that the T cells can then uh, come in. So vemurafenib or dubrafenib, either one, we think will do that so that our T cells will work uh, better. Now, as uh, Dr. Schnell mentioned, we're now uh, trying to uh, gene modify the T cells to make them even better. There are a lot of ways we can do that. We can put receptors in the T cells to get them to recognize antigens better. There are uh, one uh, problem is uh, that the T cells can't find their way. So if you have all your soldiers, you're trying to get them into Afghanistan, but you drop them in Hawaii, it's not going to help at all. Uh, so, um, so we have to try to get the soldiers to know where they're going. So, um, and here it, we uh, labeled these T cells with uh, radioactivity, and you can see that they go to the lung, liver, and spleen. They're just lost. They don't know where to go. Uh, they don't get to the tumor very well. So we have to teach them to get to the tumor. It turns out that uh, immune cells travel through your body by following breadcrumbs called chemokines. And these chemokines are produced by tumor cells. And so uh, you can see this is a tumor with this chemokine called CXCL1. Uh, it's brown here uh, in the tumor. And uh, the tumors make that because that helps them grow blood vessels and it helps them grow. Uh, but the problem is our immune cells can't recognize those breadcrumbs. So we, we're putting in a breadcrumb detector into the, into the T cells to get them to be able to travel to the tumor. And that's a trial that's gonna be up and running in two months time. Uh, where we're, uh, here's a, in the mouse modeling, we can see if we put this breadcrumb detector in the T cells, the T cells really could find their way much better. And uh, also had better uh, tumor regression in our animal model. So this is something that's taken a long time and a grant from the NIH uh, and, and much philanthropic support. Uh, and, and so we're now gonna do a trial, uh, taking the T cells and putting this receptor in and then seeing if those immune cells can now travel to the tumor better. We hope that we can help to uh, increase our response rates yet further. So in summary, uh, patients can achieve durable responses from T cell therapy with, uh, melanoma, with patients with melanoma can, uh, can achieve these responses. And that's our goal of uh, treating any patient with melanoma, getting a durable response, long lasting. Uh, and we know patients who fail ipilimumab can respond to T cell therapy. We're working uh, with Dr. Radvani and others to try to figure out who responds and who doesn't so we can uh, make the responses better and, and define the population of patients that should get this therapy. We're trying to simplify the methods of growing the T cells so we can increase the number of sites available out there in the country and uh, working on these combinations with targeted therapies as well as anti-PD-1 uh, therapy. So there's just a tremendous number of people to thank, uh, both in our laboratory. There's so many people uh, behind the scenes in, in the lab taking these tumors and growing the immune cells, uh, really um, and, uh, trying, uh, working through the night uh, um, to, to get these to our patients. Uh, our surgeons, our pathologists, our medical oncologists, everybody have been uh, are instrumental to trying to get these kinds of complex therapies uh, to patients. We're very lucky to be at a place like MD Anderson where we have a critical mass of wonderful um, physicians and uh, surgeons and pathologists. 
Um, thank you very much.